Hey YouTubers, so it's finally time. I've uh, made some progress and I'm going to epoxy some of the areas that I've previously uh, gone or taken down to metal. The mistake I made um, was I took a lot of the paint, I mean a lot of the paint off, probably way too much and I was not ready for uh, epoxy and rust proofing of any type and so this all of what you see was all the way down to steel bare steel and unfortunately because of my unpreparedness I let it sit for over a year and during that time I would come out and I would sand some of the surface rust off and then re um, you know I'd use mineral spirits to clean it up and and rinse and repeat I did it a bunch of times um, but now it's finally time um, the grade that you see on here I got lazy and a few weeks ago I said well let me try something um, I didn't want to mask everything off so I used the epoxy that I'm going to use to spray which is just the cheap stuff um, full epoxy from Nason um, and I tried to roll it on uh, I know I know um, and uh, although it applied uh, the consistency, the, the viscosity for this epoxy is definitely not made for that type of application. Um, it's way too runny. It's like water, basically. And, and regardless of how dry you apply it with a foam brush or, uh, or a foam roller, um, after a couple seconds it will tend to, to run. So that's okay. I got some of it on there. Um, I sanded it back down with uh, 80 uh, in most spots and uh, now it's masked to the best of my abilities. So this is my first masking job. Um, I'm not going to be doing the interior quite yet of the tailgate. So basically these are the areas that are going to get uh, a shot for epoxy. I still have some taping to do around the gas fill, mask off the wheel arches, and so I'm basically going from in here, not this door jam, all of this stuff underneath here, tailgate, tailgate surround, not the inside of the tailgate, again back on this side. I spent more time on the passenger side so we'll be going all the way out here going into the frame uh, jams here and that's it so follow along if you want I'll show you what my settings are and you guys can uh, happily critique me because this is going to be the first time I'm spraying a car the other thing I have to decide is you know this is a garage and uh, I know that when I've sprayed some cabinets in here, I got overspray everywhere. I mean, you could still see some of it on the floor. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to open the garage door and scoot the Jeep uh, about halfway out. I've got a big fan that I'm going to set up and just have it blow out in hopes of minimizing some of the overspray. I don't really care if it gets over here. That's fine. But... Uh, try to keep it away from here. I think in the future <clears throat> I am going to build a wall right here with just some uh, 2x4s and some visqueen plastic uh, just to keep the dust uh, and overspray out because I am going to spray the primer and uh, top coat and clear at some point in the future. So we'll see. The other thing I wanted to show you is the gun. Uh, you've all seen the purple gun from uh, HF before. Uh, it's got a 1.4 tip. I've used it before to spray this epoxy on a winch project that I did and it seemed to go okay. So that's what I'm going to use again. Um, the full epoxy spec sheet says 1.4 to 1.8 uh, is acceptable. I think 1.5 to 1.8 but it seemed to spray okay. I don't plan on reducing it. Um, 
and we'll see. I'll show you what the setup's going to be like, but this is going to be my uh, paint area here for prep. I need to get a couple things still ready. Um, mixing cup. This stuff mixes one to one, and it has a 30 minute induction time if it's 70 degrees or higher, and a one hour induction time if it's 70 degrees and below. So <clears throat> right now it is 71 and 70% 70 humidity, which isn't great, but that's what we'll do. So I'll set it up here on the shaker, shake the hell out of it, uh, set up some more stuff, scoot the Jeep forward, put some plastic down on the ground, and uh, I'll bring you back when I'm ready. All right, so time to uh, get a little more serious. I shake this up while that's shaking. I'm gonna put some tarp down. I move the wag uh, a little bit outside. <clears throat> And we'll see how we get along from here. Okay, so we won't need the compressor on. Pressure on. Shake and bake. All right, so my plan is to make up, I don't know, I guess 16 ounces. Maybe, let's say, 20 ounces, because I think I'm, I want to do two coats, and I don't want to wait two times the induction period. So the pot life for this stuff is, uh, is pretty long. The induction time will be 30 minutes. So I'll make up, let's say I make up 24 ounces, okay? One-to-one -one mixture. I'll, uh, I'll use this cup here. And uh, then we'll let it sit. This stuff is pretty nasty, so um, respirator is definitely mandatory because of the isocyanates that are in here. Okay, so we'll do 24 ounces, one to one mixture, so 12 ounces uh, epoxy, and then 12 ounces activator. All right, so the way I do this might not be like everybody else. I don't like pouring from these. I've never been very good at it. So um, I'm just gonna scoop and deposit in here. I shook it for about five minutes, so it should be well agitated, which is what I'm trying not to be. So, all right, so mistake number one, why so many stir sticks? All right, here we go. me at right at 12 ounces okay let that drain in here right at 12 ounces you can't see but two cups 12 ounces all right and activator Oh, 
24. Then while this is uh, inducing, I'm going to put the tarp down and finish off any uh, taping, clear everything up, wax and grease remove again, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll catch up in a little bit. Alright, while the epoxy is inducing in there, got some tarpage. I'm going to go over it with a tack cloth, uh, wipe it down with some um, wax and grease remover, let all that stuff flash off. It should be pretty clean. But there's a lot of dust in the garage still, so this is kind of a good practice run, honestly, more than anything. Um, to make sure that I get, you know, used to the routine of cleaning, degreasing, doing all the things that you're supposed to do before you paint, which I've never done. So this is a good, um, good practice run anyway. Not too bad. A little bit of dust, but I'll go over it again. And then uh, again, and again, and again, and again. I'm a little worried about the um, the fan uh, because I think it'll. Incre I mean, it's a fan, so it's supposed to blow air, but I got to move it because right now it's. I think it's a little bit too close to where I'm going to be spraying. Always find something. Well, it'll be better than when I started. All right, I'm ready. We're at the induction time. Sorry about the fan noise. I just finished wiping everything down. This is the only part that's in the sun. I'm not really worried about it. Close the garage door a little bit. We got a airflow coming through there. And I guess that's it. Um, my gun is set. At about uh, 28 PSI. And I'm going to put my mask on. I'm just going to set the camera up like this. And, um, and go. Okay? So.
Too heavy. See that right there? Too heavy there. Too heavy there. Too heavy there. Too heavy there. Wow. Oh. Way too much. All of that. Big run. Big run. This seems okay. Little run right there. Run right there. Run right there. Oh. Not great, but I'm gonna wait for this to flash about five, ten minutes, then do a second coat uh, so that before I do any body work, I'll uh, I'll take care of those with uh, a 220. Okay, better than when I started, arguably. I'm gonna turn the fluid down a little bit on this one. See if that makes a little bit of a difference. when it's all dry okay it's been about 15 minutes it's still tacky but uh, let's review first I was cleaning my gun <laughs> and uh, it's time for 
a new gun. This is the same gun I've been using for a number of years to paint cabinets and miscellaneous stuff. And um, I did not, although I cleaned it with just some uh, paint thinner, lacquer thinner, I didn't open it up to check. And uh, yeah, it's probably time to get another $9 gun. Okay, maybe I'll save that one for something else. <clears throat> Second, um, if you're using solvents and things, you should have a metal can to put all of your rags in if you're not going to burn them outside or leave them outside to vent. Um, and then let's go over this. So uh, what I noticed, and I guess there should have been a clue, you could see, you could still see the scratches um, from the 80 and 120 grit that I used on the metal. Uh, so this epoxy is very, very thin, except in the areas where I went too heavy. And I figured out, I mean, this is my first automotive paint application. So instead of, you know, I had my fan this way and on these areas I went down. And so of course there was way too much. Uh, I probably went a little bit slower because I was nervous. Um, but in general, I mean, you know, yeah, it's orange peel and it's epoxy and so on, but it's not half bad, honestly, for, for what it is. Um, again, the intent of this is just rust prevention. Um, there's more runs there. This whole channel here, I went way too thick. I don't know why, but I think when I went here and overlapped and overlapped, it just built up. So that's okay. Most of this is gonna get, I mean, I'll sand this down before primer anyway, but a uh, little bit here, right around there. This bottom lip, a little bit heavy here. So I don't know, this is all from the first coat. And that was my, that's when I was really nervous. The second coat, I, I went a little bit faster. Um, maybe a little too fast, but I think I got everything that I wanted covered. Um, and honestly, at this point, I would rather be a little bit heavy then have to do it again in spots. So, not too bad. Let's see. Where else? So, good news. Minimal overspray anywhere in the rest of the garage. I'm sure my neighbors are not going to be happy uh, because of the fumes. Luckily, they live over there. A little bit of a run right there. Some of this stuff is, you know, gets covered up by the seal. I'm still going to try to do a good job. But yeah, so good learning experience anyway. I was nervous as hell, I'll tell you that. Um, okay, so next steps. Um, I'm debating, you know, which in which way to continue, right? Um, I have a lot of surface to cover. Everything that has etching primer on it um, had major scratches from the previous owner when they took the vinyl off with a razor blade. So that's unfortunate, but <clears throat> so I've got doors, the rest of the body. I don't think I'm going to go down to metal on the roof. The hood deserves attention. The fenders do too. I took the other one off. That was probably the worst of it. So 
And then the interior, you know, this, the color itself is kind of a vanilla. And um, I'm debating on whether or not to do a color change. And if I do a color change, uh, there, are, there are complications, right? There are interior painted pieces like the A pillar and some of the areas back here that are exposed, which means I'd need to take all the interior out. Um, and of course the engine bay would need to be repainted to match. So I don't know if I'm, I'm game for that. I think vanilla might be the color that we're gonna stick with. And, um, and I think that's it. So I'm gonna let this cure overnight. Maybe come back to a little bit of sanding or if I can keep my hands off of it, I think that will probably be best. Let it go, move on to the next section. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please comment, let me know what you think. I know that there are other epoxies that might be better, higher quality, and so on and so forth, but uh, this fit my budget. And um, so, anyway, let me know what you think. Hope you have a good day.